Hey guys, today I'm going to tackle the issue of is the Magic the Gathering mystery cubes and boxes that you can find in any Walmart or any Target or Majors. I've never been to a Majors, but I think it is up north, so it's like the Walmart equivalent. But many big chain stores carry this product. What is the product? The product is a mystery cube or a mystery box. It could be called a chaos box. And Tularean Community College has been very vocal recently on how it is not a good deal. And then he breaks it down in terms of the actual, the cost of the promo, the cost of the packs. And then he concludes, his final conclusion is this garbage is a ripoff. Now let's go back and remember what products that he recommended. He recommended the monthly magic box. He didn't believe that was a ripoff, although that was managed from a guy in jail and thousands, if not tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars was being stolen by a guy operating this in jail. So of course he couldn't deliver the boxes. He was in jail for security fraud. Oh man, exactly who I want to manage my business. Uh, let's, what other, hmm, the Pico trade, I think, was also, I, I guess, a fraud. And he recommended that in multiple videos, just like the monthly Magic Box. Most recently, he's been recommending Card Kingdom's intro deck, uh, the deck of bulk. So the only real selling point of the intro deck that Card Kingdom would sell you instead of the one that you would get at your, I don't know, local game store, their physical place to play Magic, Wow, imagine that. Is that the cards in the Card Kingdom one are far worse. They suck. I'm going to order them. I'm actually going to order them and open them on camera and show you how crappy they are. Because then there'll be no deniability. Uh, there'll be no, oh, I didn't know what was in them. Which was what they said about the monthly magic box. Which is uh, what... So the excuse of why they promoted the monthly magic box, Tolarian, Weds, and Friends was that they didn't know their subscribers were not receiving the boxes until many months earlier. And that gets me to my argument that anyone who wants to be sponsored, who wants to Tolarian Community College to say nice things about them is going to sponsor him. And they're, they're going to, Osha Pro is one of his sponsorships. Or I believe it's like Game Nights. He's very close to Game Nights. So they, they sponsor Game Nights. And people who don't sponsor him, like Walmart, he just crushes them and gives them a garbage review. He wouldn't even give them a grade. Now here, I'm going to defend the Mystery Cube and based on capitalistic principles. So if the Mystery Cube was a bad deal. Uh, someone involved in this scenario has to play Magic, right? Like by definition, they're either a new player, a brand new player, who just wants to get new cards, or they are a long-term player. But someone buying this cube is making a decision to give cash from probably their job, Tolarian, the mana source, to buy this cube. And even if in the worst case scenario, it's your grandmother who buys you this cube, and then they give you the cube, you might say, oh, well, this is not what I wanted, but you would still probably open it supposedly be disappointed and then be upset then you would probably tell your grandmother not to buy this for you because you were so disappointed and upset and then she wouldn't do so in the future so if this played out where people were disappointed by these cubes all the time they would no longer buy them and it would not be in every single walmart and target and walgreens in existence but why does it seem like they just have more and more? We have Pokemon mystery cubes. We have Pokemon mystery boxes, Yu-Gi-Oh. We have chaos packs. And, you know, some of the most popular unboxings are of this product. Why would we, why would someone who sees a video online even consider buying this product? And if no one buys this product, then why would they make it? Because they're not dummies, right? They would just stop making the product. And in fact, the product is getting more expensive. So the product in many eyes is getting worse. 
but that's because more people want to buy it and it is in higher demand. Let me explain why this product is in so high demand. A, it's available anywhere. So you can go to any Walmart, any physical Walmart and buy the product. It's not going to be identical because the packs may be different, but you can actually buy the product. Your local game store does not have this product. So yeah, that's why a pack opening of this product on YouTube can become so popular because it is accessible to everybody because everyone has a Walmart nowadays. Everyone has a Target. So the value, I think the biggest premise that Tolarian, the biggest flaw in Tolarian Community's argu college's argument that this is garbage is the fact that people who buy this product are looking for value. They are not. They're looking for entertainment. And this product is massively entertaining, right? You don't know what you're going to get in there. Yeah, it could be garbage, but like, theoretically it could be something good and... You know, that's what people like to do. I don't see a difference between gambling. Uh, so his recommendations is to buy singles. You know who sells a lot of singles? Card Kingdom. And you know how you can go to buy a ton of great singles? Cardkingdom.com forward slash TCC. Ah, and there lies in the rub. So... Let me just give you the economic story of one, one Dr. Wedge. Let's say Magic Fest flies him in and they pay money, they pay his plane ticket, they pay for his wife's plane ticket, they pay for his hotel that he shared with his soon-to-be wife, and they fly him in and they're promoting him on Facebook ads, maybe elsewhere, that he's going to be at this event and he injures himself the Friday before, the, I think the Thursday before the event. Now, all the people who went to Las Vegas to meet with him it can no longer meet with him. So they have been false advertised, right? It's like a celebrity. Let's assume that we expect Lindsay Lohan to be at my birthday party. And then Lindsay Lohan has uh, maybe a drug issue and she can't be at my birthday party. Yeah, we would all say, oh, let's start a page or GoFundMe for Lindsay's drug rehab. I just scammed the blank out of you guys. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. Would anyone accept that premise? If you wouldn't accept that premise, why would you accept we should donate to Weds when he injured himself with no health insurance and we paid all this money to fly out to meet him and we didn't get to meet him? Instead, we took all this money that we had. Not only did we fly out to meet him because of advertising, false advertising, we A, didn't meet him because he injured himself before the event and was injured during the entirety of the event, but we donated our other hard work from our nine to five job to pay for his health insurance. Card Kingdom, a channel fireball at this point, should realize from math, I know they cannot do math very well based on their current card prices being two times more expensive than tcgplayer.com, especially for comments and stuff, because that's how they get ya. We would know, hmm, Imagine we're opening a business and we had to hire someone to fly in to be a guest speaker or a guest you know, convention. Let's say we were opening an anime convention and we hired Lindsay. And we had some panels, we had some special events, some cool drafts with Lindsay. And she didn't show up. But the people paid to be there, the, the, the guests paid to be there. Instead, we all just took our money and spent, instead of spending it at the vendors for the uh, artist gallery or artist alley or the merchants, we took all of our money that we would have spent with the vendors and we gave it to as a donation to the Lindsay. The vendors would be very upset because they were promised a certain amount of people. The advertising of the event was trying to use somebody's name to drum up more interest. Otherwise, why would you spend money on pay-per-click? If you don't know what pay-per-click is, you can follow my other channel and I have, a very, I have some very good explanations of what it is and why it's important. So you as a vendor paid all this money to sell magic cards to these interested people. But no one's interested because they spent $100,000 donating money. 
to a guy who was supposed to be at the event who injured himself. So if everything was about the pennies and the nickels and the dimes, no one would ever open a single booster pack. No one would ever donate to a Patreon. It's about the entertainment value that this mystery cube. So it's okay for Tularean Community College to say, hey, I have entertainment value. Can I have a dollar? But it's not okay for Walmart's mystery cubes to say that. Why is this cube so popular? You post like, Tularean posts like these regular videos and they don't get any traction on Reddit. He posts this. This goes to the top of the page in the bl in a blink of the eye. He knows this. That's why he does it. The next video he's going to make is about eBay repacks. Now, eBay repacks, I think, is kind of scammy. The reason that I don't think Walmart is a scam is because if it was so bad, you have to trust that the consumer can eventually make logical decisions. So, for instance, the $100,000 medical insurance for someone else that you've never met and you don't actually know who and who creates no content they might fool you once but the second time around after you see that the guy is taking a transatlantic flight he doesn't make any videos he's constantly you know struggling against mental anxiety which is a real issue but you're being paid to do a job and you're being paid regardless of it's not a good incentive. People who are wealthy and intelligent, they have jobs not because they need to, but because it keeps their mind active. Warren Buffett, he has a job not because he needs to have a job. Or Bill Gates has a foundation with Melinda Gates and um, what's it? Mark Zuckerberg has a foundation. They have these other hobbies because it keeps their mind sharp and it keeps them engaged. So when someone who's never had a job is asking for money, I find that very, very offensive because unless they're in a dire medical situation, which they shouldn't be taking transatlantic flights in that instance, you should be, you should work. Um, and that's, you know, society. If no one worked and everyone just e-bagged, we would be screwed as a society, right? I mean, we would be similar to uh, the TV shows in the UK, except instead of being like just one or two families in every neighborhood, every, every neighborhood would be like this. Everyone would be on special benefits and the dole, as they call it, the dole. Anyway, my interesting um, takeaway from this is that the majority of Magic players, especially the uh, casually enfranchised, I, I don't want to call them and franchise because that's like the old school if you don't have like tens of thousands of dollars you're not that enfranchised because there are some people who are very enfranchised but this people who spend their time or their money and they listen to Tolarian or the mana source and you know what the newest deck tech is based on the winning deck of a gp from people who never even played a deck or own the cards or make content on they are being hoodwinked because these videos are coming out and the Magic Mystery Cube is for them. It's a product for them. They can choose not to buy it. If they're getting ripped off all the time, eventually a logical customer, and this would be a life lesson for them that is more valuable than the $25 they spent wasting on this product, it might be a good life lesson. Um, one of the things that when I first got into MTG Finance, it was okay to make mistakes as long as you learn from them and you did not repeat them again. Now, if you continue to buy these mystery packs, maybe you like them. Some of the most popular videos on YouTube for Magic the Gathering are these mystery packs. I can see the appeal. It's gambling on gambling, right? So opening a pack is gambling. I opened $65 of Innistrad packs and I got five bucks back. I know I'm going to lose money, but I enjoy it because I enjoy the gamble. You don't go to a casino, look up and see how fancy the casino is. They even have free soda for the casino I go to in Oklahoma City. So they have unlimited soda. 
you cannot afford unlimited soda at this Indian casino unless they're making bank. Right? Think about that. You go to the casino, it looks really nice, there's loud noises, and you're really excited. No one goes to the casino and logically thinks, yes, I'm going to make money today. I just hope I don't bleed money out. I just hope I lose a little bit. The same with these cubes. I don't think anyone goes to this cube expecting to get more value than they paid into it, which is Tolarian Community College's argument, which I think is fascinating given who, who his uh, main sponsor is and what they do on uh, the digital marketing side. So, you know, before you like attack someone else, Walmart in this case, or Target, casual players, and you tell them what to buy, and so he's saying to buy singles, but if you're a brand new player, how do you know what singles are good? What if you bought the most expensive single right before the pre-order price and then the tanked in price? That would actually be worse value than this Magic Mystery Cube, right? Buying the new hottest Planeswalker for 50 bucks and then in two weeks, it's now down to five bucks. That's what Card Kingdom wants you to do, right? Card Kingdom wants you to pre-order. It wants you to pay ton oodles and noodles of money for these hype cards, these singles. So the concept of buying singles for new players isn't the same. And that's how I know that he's missing, Tolarian Community College is missing the point of who this product is for and who would buy the product. The person buying this product doesn't know what singles to buy. Point blank. And they could actually lose more money buying singles from Card Kingdom than they would lose buying this mystery pack. Singles are not always a good deal. Singles before rotation are a horrendous deal. Singles during pre-order, you're going to just get crushed in price. Maybe one or two cards. Again, if you're a new player, you're not going to be able to predict those one or two cards anyway. Hey, you know, Card Kingdom is hyping me up. Tolarian Community Cards College is hyping me up. Let me buy all these cool singles from Card Kingdom. Oh, crap. I got taken to the bank. So... Card Kingdom's business model is not different from Walmart's business model. That's why their intro decks have the same bulk stuff. They're never going to give you more value than you paid for, because that would make no sense. The reason Card Kingdom has such a high buy list is because of the SEO and PPC, which I'm not going to go over, but they target casual players that Tolarian Community College pushes their way, just like it did with Pico Trade, just like he did with the fake monthly magic box that was never delivered to anybody. And they buy it at huge margin. So as a store, I can understand that Card Kingdom digitally has attacked certain aspects um, that other places have not. Even Channel Fireball hasn't done as good of a job as Card Kingdom has in the SEO, Search Engine Optimization Department. Anyway, if you're interested in learning more and helping me get my sweet vengeance on um, those who have spited me in the past, please, please subscribe to this channel. All right, bye.